Okay, so got a quiet MC no in a eba arrival. I'm gonna I'm gonna any supporters now I'll be here unveiling. Administrative manager and also coach. I'm coach I'm gonna see a piano. I'm seeing eba. Um, from the major campaign, teacher and a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast Department of Health, Physical Education and Recreation. Dr. Ogun is a CAF license A holder and was appointed as technical member of the Ghana's coaching staff at the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. He is also a member of the GFA instructors team that train coaches at all levels. At the school level, he was the head coach of Eastern Region GES and the top team between the year 2000 and 2004, where he led the team to win gold and silver respectively at national under 20 
and a 12 middle championship in, in 2003 and 2004. He was also the head coach of the University of Cape Coast male soccer team between 2009 and 2020, where he won four gold medals and four silver medals at the Ghana University Sports Association Games, GUSA. At the elite level, Dr. Ogum has coached most clubs in the Ghanaian football industry, notably Elmina Sharks in 2013, where he qualified the team to the Ghana Division I League. In 2016, Dr. Ogun joined Cape Coast Base in Busuan Grass, where he turned out impressive results, but had to resign at the end of the season to pursue his PhD program in sports psychology. Dr. Ogun later had a brief three months preseason stint with Karela United Football Club before the start of the 2019 GPL, that's the Ghana Premier League, before securing a two year deal at Wafa in Sugakope in the same year. His first season at the Red Bull Arena in Sugakope saw the Academy Boys climb to 10th position in the league that was truncated due to the announced expose. The 2021 season witnessed a massive leap for Ogun and Wafa as they finished on, the, on, on third place. His exploits there secured him a move to Asante Protocol, where he won his first major league trophy and was named the coach of the year at the end of the season. He returns with enormous experience at national, as national team manager, coach educationist, coaching instructor, and also a sports psychologist. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Dr. Prosper Nate Ogun. Thank you. Doctor, you meet our distinguished media men and women, supporters of our dear club who are here gathered for this program. Thank you. Extraordinary uh, introduction and profile. Uh, thank you to all for your time. Uh, I would also like to add my voice uh, to express our sincere apologies for today in the start of the program, as Nana has already established it was due to certain internal issues that we had to address. Thank you for accepting our apologies, and thank you for having the patience to meet for this time. I am overly excited, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I think there is nothing in my life, uh, probably apart from the day I got married, uh, that can be compared to this moment. Uh, and, and I am overly excited based on the fact that I've been chosen I have been chosen by His Royal Majesty to two four said to two the second and the whole of Asantiman to lead or to direct the technical affairs of this renowned and successful club on the continent and of our nation. Great players, excellent players, including a former captain and a former winner who sits right on my right hand side with me today. Very few coaches have had the opportunity to direct the technical affairs of such a great club. 
and that is why I see myself to be privileged and to be humbled to be here today. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the king, to the whole of Asantiman, all stakeholders of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, for having that confidence in me and giving me the opportunity to once again serve such an honorable club. This is a club that we don't support, but we worship. And that is why I am honored and I'm humbled today. I would also like to thank the IMC, led by Nana, and ably supported by our captain and former national team coach, Chrissy Apia, and our renowned football administrator. Even though it's been a very short period that we started working, it has been very, very, very impressive. Ideas are excellent. Intentions are super. And I want to say that I've enjoyed the few days that we've worked together. And I know I'm going to enjoy it the more and the best as we move forward. So thank you for <coughs> accepting me and thank you for coming so that we can talk about the future of Kumasi Asante Kotoko today. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's the right time. Uh, and it's the right time especially when the king of this royal land invites you to talk uh, uh, with you about the future of this club. Uh, I have no option than to say yes to it. And I know it is the right time. Right, uh, for the target, let, let me use the back, uh, back to my approach. Uh, for the target, uh, I think uh, definitely you can't coach Kumasi as Ante Kotoko uh, and not be thinking of winning trophies. Uh, but then uh, what this time around the approach is going to be is uh, the first year is going to be used to, to put the team together. Uh, we need to put together a very formidable team, a very respectable team that can compete on the local and international front. So that's going to be for the first year. Um, and within this year, we want to look at the players that we are going to have now, and then look at those we can, we can, we can use uh, in the subsequent years, because we want to build a team that will be consistent, that will be repetitive in performance. Uh, what this means is that uh, we are going to have a game model where the youth team, which is key uh, to this program, this is my second coming, would also play in the same way. Uh, we are going to have a youth team who are going to be uh, residential. Uh, because of that, I've also brought in coaches, youth team coaches, who have seen it before uh, to, to help in that process. What this means is that these youth players are going to be given the opportunity, those who excel, uh, if I'm using percentage, those who begin to show glimpses of performance, around 80% of performance, will be given two, three times to train with the first team. 
and per the FA statutes or regulations for the league, you have 10 youth players who can also play. So these youth players will be given the opportunity to train with the first team. If they do, if they, 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 they fit in well, will also be given the opportunity uh, to play in the first team in some of the matches. Now, what is going to happen again in the first year is that we need to reconcile what the youth team does with that of the first team. So that uh, in terms of behavioral and structural adaptation, both the youth team and the first team will be on the same, on the same field. Now, from moving on in the second year, what it means is that now the game model would have been established and every game model comes with certain technical and tactical characteristics of players. So what it means is that in the first year, even though some players are going to be with us for this first year, those we think that have not exhibited those technical and tactical characteristics will, will, will be shown the exit because it's a two-way thing. It's performance oriented and business oriented. Business oriented in the sense that the youth players, those who do well, will now be promoted to the first team. So it means that Koroko will not be spending so much money to be to be buying players. Again, these same youth players, the team can decide to transfer them to other clubs to 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 make to accrue some money to see to the daily running of the team. So that will also be there. Now back to what I was saying earlier on. So those who not, who to the opinion of the technical staff, uh, we think that have not lived up to expectation will be shown the door. And then some of the youth players will, be, will also be brought in. And then a few, maybe one or two that will spot uh, in other clubs will also be brought in. And around this time, the game model would have been consolidated. So we need to be more competitive than before. Then in the third year, it means that by that time, more experience and exposure has been given. We, 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 we I'll, I'll call it the flow zone. I expect that in the third year, we should be in the flow zone where we have to be very competitive, especially in Africa. So basically, this is how it's, it's going to be. And then from there on, we continue in the fourth and the fifth year, and then we move on. So, uh, it's going to be a long-term project, and I expect everybody here to be very supportive because the key to, to the biggest clubs in Africa, the Alis, the Zamaliks, the TP Mandi, is, is about the youth teams. And I believe that if we all become sincere in the selection process and give these young and upcoming uh, case, JHS, SHS, we give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to be under our titulate where we take them through <coughs> modern friends of training. I'm sure within the shortest possible time, we'll have a lot of young or younger players who will be competing for Kotoko at the top level. So basically, this is how it's going to be like. Thank you very much. Yeah. Come on. What the coach just said, um, I believe that because it's a very big team, and each and every one expects him to be winning trophies and whatever. But um, the intention of the king, the Tumpo, is to make sure uh, the IMC we try and prepare a team, especially the youth, and then we should not put pressure on anybody. The intention is to give the coach the free hand and the opportunity to be able to express whatever he wants to impart on the younger ones. So I'll play, take this opportunity to play with uh, every supporter that they should all bear with us, especially the coach, that we are building a team and the ambition is to make sure by from next year, next two years, you know, we should, comp we should be competing at the highest level, you know, trying to uh, get a cup, but we should not put pressure now. That, as you all are aware, the number of, look, if you look at the number of players that are being sent out, 
you know, and the number of players who are coming in. You know, it takes time to blend. And uh, here's a time where we need your help as well, you know, in terms of support. And even when things are tough, this is where we need you the most. So um, that's the little that I can add to what uh, Coach just said. On the on the preseason, uh, if you look at the period now, we have five weeks to the start of the preseason. Now, if you look at what preseason research says. We have the minimum preseason period, which is six weeks. The average is eight weeks, and the maximum is ten weeks. And now this is what research is saying: if you have six weeks, uh, and especially where we are having to blend old and new, where we have about ten or so players coming in, uh, what it means is that. Uh, it will, it will take some time. By the start of the season, we may not be at the level that we want. By the start of the season, we may not be at the level that we want. What this means is that whilst we play our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth games, we'll still be in a preseason. That is an indirect preseason. So it will still give us the opportunity to put the team together. Now, if we have the eight weeks, that one is enough to let us practice the game model, play a lot of friendlies, be sure um, there's that team cohesion, everything, the team chemistry, everything is there. The game model becomes so clear mentally uh, to the players and to everybody who comes to watch us. When you have 10 weeks, you become overly prepared and sometimes you hit your peak before the season starts. Now in our case, we don't even have the six weeks. It means we have five weeks, which is less than the period that we need. And even out of these five weeks, we are going to use about two weeks for friendly games. We have to play low profile friendly games, which is either with division two, so academies, we need to play medium profile games, which will be division ones. And then we need to play high profile games, which will be the premier division teams. And ideally, if we are to do things right, if time were to be there, we're to, to, to follow the format. It means when we play a game, we need three days for recovery and for correctional training. For them to recover, and then the errors that were de detected in the game, we have to also correct them. So let's say we play today, tomorrow will be recovery. Then the next day, which is, uh, today is Monday. So we play today, Monday. Tuesday will be recovery. Wednesday will be for correctional training. The video analyst will put the pieces together. We'll look at what went wrong and what went right. And then we'll design a training program to correct it. And we'll play our next match. So if you look at even this, it tells you that even the two weeks that will be will be voted for the friendly games will not be enough. But then we have what we call combined technical, physical, and tactical training. We try to use that approach where we see that we can get the best out of the players. But then we make sure that we don't break them down because if you break them down, it means that you are not going to get them for the game. So basically, we are not going to get the minimum, which is even the six weeks. But then we we'll, we'll try our best and do it. And for, for, for David, what do you think is the reason why it's here? <laughs> what a funny note. <laughs> what, 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 what do you think? I, I think he's been to be the assistant. Yeah, he's, he's been to be one of the assistants. Yeah, yeah. He's a very competent, very professional person. He, he has a lot of knowledge about the game. And you see, in choosing an assistant, you need people who are loyal. People that, when I try to, to put a player in order, he will also think along the same line, but will not go behind me and pretend he's the good person, but I'm the bad person. You don't need such assistance. You need assistance who will behave, who will go by the rules and regulations. So when it comes to competence, he's there. 
When it comes to professionalism, it's at the top level. When it comes to loyalty, I mean, it's there. And when it comes to that element of collaboration, cooperation, he's, he's also there. He's, 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 he's an insightful coach. He's the coach who always asks of the WH, why this? When are we supposed to do this? Where are we supposed to do this? The WH questions is, is, is in that category. And I, as a coach, those are the people I need. I don't need an assistant, whatever you say, you say yes, yes, yes. You need to question what I'm doing. And he falls within that frame. Yeah, um, per your question, you've seen certain things on social media, but it's not coming from our official page. Is that not it? Yeah. Right, so wait till it comes from so the official page. Wait till it comes from the official page. Right. Thank you. Let's see. Because Koroko is a professional club, and people cannot just be anywhere, assume things, put them out there, and then we also come here and come and establish it. So let's let let let's see as the days of food. An official community will come and need to address that. Thank you. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, if you wouldn't mind letting me know who the address would be and what happened to those who are currently there, it would be grateful. Right. Right. Um uh, David Dixon Oklu is going to be the first assistant coach which I've already spoken about him. The second assistant coach is going to be Burton Wilson Asari. Um, and it saddens to let you all know that he lost the wife three days ago. Oh. That's why he's not here. He lost the wife three days ago. Ah, that's it. So, I mean, he's, 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 he's going to be around at the right time. Um, IMC have decided to pay a curtsy visit uh, to him on on Wednesday uh, uh, with some few staff from Malaysia. So he tells you uh, how supportive uh, it is. And then the I have other staff which is okay. okay. It's okay. No, no, no. No, we need your technical No, no, no. The staff which is also new. Moro. Moro. Which Moro? Moro. Yeah. yeah. Moro Ibrahim is going to be one of the assistant coaches. Um, and for a brief, uh, uh, Benton was an Asari. Uh, was once an assistant coach at, at Inter Allies. He was also the head of the youth team at Inter Allies. He's also a GFA coach instructor, so he tells you his pedigree. And for Moro Ibrahim, uh, he was my direct assistant at Wafa. Currently, uh, recently, he led uh, Park Academy to the Division One side. So he tells you he also has some worth of experience when it comes to grooming youth players. So uh, that is it. All right. We have a video analyst, but I don't want to talk about it now. Yeah, because the game is going towards that direction. Right. The two processes are not the same. And, and I'm not that type of person who believes in problem identification. But I believe in even when I see them in my small corner, what can I do about it? So uh, whether there were problems or not, I believe that it's a new direction. Uh, whatever I have observed throughout last season, all that I have to do is go back to my notes and make sure that uh, we, we, we can start and get things done right. All right, so we take the final one. Okay, Using a leader for me? <laughs> <laughs> or you've already chosen one for me? And what's the reason behind your proposal? Um, because um, Sharif was used as a utility player during your first term, and he displayed a very good leadership on the field. And in as much as there is no substantive captain now, I am asking if we would see him in your captain series. Right. Uh, what I want to tell you is that it's a new platform for all the players. And uh, I'm going to observe everybody, even though those who are there have observed them 
and those I'm bringing on board, I know them. But then uh, I need to let them come together and then I will see how they relate with each other. And as I observe them, I'll be able to identify the leadership qualities in them. Remember, uh, two key things come into mind when you want to select a leader. Um, it's about performance, that's the first thing. The other thing is about discipline, somebody who can, who can ensure that the ethics of the club are, are, are held in high esteem. So I will, I will, I will use this period to, to, to observe them, then engage my backroom staff, and then based on what we have observed, we also engage the IMC and give them reason or reasons why we think that A, B, C, D players should be the leaders in that order. So for now, uh, let's, let's hold on to that one and let's give ourselves time. I'm sure we can come out with that. All right. Uh, I am chairman of the Kisu Patamanya and the NCC in Nigeria. We just say, and cry the buyer and I ask him to do one say, "Oh boy, I'm paying for nine." Any coach about so we say, "Oh boy, first no, or to suffer NCC my Kushian world at a kujaji." I'm a only a meetings. Meetings are only a year. A swaba. And next to obey, I'm here at ten o'clock. If you so, I'm not saying what phone you say. You must not be on your mind. To buy a buy in the NCC, yes, I made them say, Yes, support to near a great team, Mrs. C. of the Edma, yes, support to individual, and into the Nadaroma, say, National NCC for no abomination who be necessary for a catcher, yen for cannabon team, a bagua catchy, Danny Dana, no be open by any good room, so you know, a bad again. It didn't get a chance for national communication. Thank you all once again. Um, every organization that wants to succeed does so on one common thing, which is unity. All the organs within the organization must come together. There will be one focus, there will be one direction. But then, under the focus or the direction, other members would have to work to make sure that the purpose for which the organization has been established is achieved. Now, what I want to say is that I want everybody, everybody to come on board. And I like the message the NCCPR group has given. Everybody should come on board. Let's all try as much as possible to do one. The past is past. It's gone. Let's pick the lessons from the past. And then screen the lessons that we've picked from the past. Which ones we have to repeat them and which ones we don't have to repeat them. That is the only way that we can achieve our aim. That is the only way that we can take Kotoko to the days of the 82s and the 83s where the allies were no team in front of Kotoko. So please, I'm pleading with everybody from near and far. Please, if somebody says something and you were not happy, leave it. Forgive and forget. If somebody did something and you were not happy, forgive and forget. If you have the opportunity to apologize to the person. Please do that. Because in unity, there is strength. And in unity, there is mutual respect. We will respect each other. We will agree to disagree on opinions. But at the end of the day, which one is paramount? The paramount thing is what? Kotoko. That is it. It is Kotoko. If there is unity, there is obedience. If, if there is love, we try to obey, listening to each other. There is respect. There is understanding. 
So I'm pleading with all of you. If indeed you want to reposition, and the adjective there is what? Reposition. We want to reposition Kotoko amongst the top in African football in the world. Amongst the likes of the Alis, the Zamalits, the Sandans, the Tipi, Mazimbis, and what have you. Then we must come together. Because when we come together, then we can joy joy. We can think. We can think within the box and we can think out of the box. We can think within ourselves and come out with opinions or suggestions. Or we can think with others and come out with opinions and suggestions. And as I said in my first comment, I'm going to still use the collaborative approach. My doors are open. If you have any suggestion, you can bring it on board. Service service, Nyansa in the back of the And service service, say, in Kuchi, I'm so many That is it. In Kuchi, I'm only free. So please, and please, and please, let us all bury our differences. Now, the picture, when you have your eyes on, you must see is Kumasi Asante Kotoko. The picture, when you close your eyes, you can see should be Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Wow. It shouldn't be me. It shouldn't be anybody. Yes. It should be, it's unfortunate this flag is on there. It should be this flag. Wow. Wow. Yes. Whether your eyes are open or closed, <laughs> two days that we can reposition protocol among the best in Africa. Thank you, and I hope that we are going to be in unity and in love, and out of this, we'll be able to achieve the purpose for which Kumasi Asante Protocol has been established. And remember, the name of Kumasi Asante Protocol alone, just the name alone, sends shivers down the spines of overnight. Thank you. Thank all of you uh, for coming and being a short notice to the NCC, to the old footballers. Uh, we appreciate your comments and we take it in good faith. Let's use the words of the Lord's Prayer to be our guide. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those Now, from henceforth, the new face of Kotoko is going to be the flag, and behind the flag is the coach. Kotoko is going to be the coach and the team. It's no more going to be officials who we will be working behind the scenes to support him. Whatever questions you have, Anything you have to do is the team, the coach, and the playing body. Once again, on behalf of my colleagues, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you. Looking at the numbers here, uh, within six hours of notice, uh, it gives it has hope that we should be as much expected of us. I believe from His Royal Majesty, who has pledged his total support for us, whatever we're doing. From here, we're going to him. Those of you who will be able to join can join us. Uh, we're going to meet him with the peers. But once again, let me say a very big thank you for coming, for your time. Continue to pray for us for the good name of Kotoko. And we say, God bless Kotoko. God bless Asantimai. And God bless Ghana Soka. Thank you very much. Fabulous! <laughs>